Good morning. Very glad to be with you. I promised Greg I would not talk about relics and indulgences. So you're completely safe with this Catholic. I'm going to talk instead on a verse from Mark's Gospel, one that I've used for many years because in three short verses, it says an awful lot that's, I think, awfully important. It says in verse 12, the spirits drove Jesus into the wilderness, into the wild place. Not the domestic place, the wild place. And he was in that wilderness for 40 days, the classic period of transformation and growth. There, it says, he was with the wild beasts. And then the final verse, but angels ministered to him. There it all is. You know, he is driven by the Spirit. Really, none of us follow the Spirit. We're driven by the Spirit. There, God creates within us a restlessness, a dissatisfaction, a longing, an irritation, a, an emptiness. Those are all created by God to keep you moving to someplace new and someplace necessary. And then he gets to this wild place, the wilderness. You know, it's worth noting, I did in my last book, that most of the biblical theophanies and transformations do not take place in the temple or the synagogue. But in fact, almost take place in nature, as it does here. Even wild nature, where we're not in charge, but something else is writing the rules. And there he was for 40 days. This account doesn't say that, it was, that he fasted. I guess you can have him doing whatever you want, but he wasn't going to church services. There's no churches or synagogues out in the wilderness. So this is a different model for how we really might come to enlightenment and realization and awareness. It isn't always by listening to sermons like I'm trying to give you now but he's alone. I'm from a place in Albuquerque uh, where I had a, a place called the Center for Action and Contemplation because my first years on the road, I recognized that an awful lot of activists needed some contemplation, that there wasn't, uh, it wasn't coming from a deep place or a transformed place themselves. So here we have a marvelous image of Jesus, we would say, presumably contemplating, is going to a deeper place for 40 days. But the first thing he meets in that wilderness is not wonderfulness or pretty hymns like we just sang, but in fact, he meets wild beasts. I warn you, when you set out on the spiritual journey and you first take the lid off of what we now call your unconscious or the deeper flow within you, the first thing that comes up are not the nice things. And I think that's why a lot of people don't go on deep spiritual journeys. You'd rather just be religious or just read scriptures or if you're Catholic, just go to Mass. But to really go on the inner journey, not a lot of people do because the first thing you meet are the wild beasts, your own garbage your own negativity, your own resentments, your own lust, your own fear, your own anger, name, all of the capital sins, that's what comes up. And who of us wants to see that? I, I surely know I don't. So I'd sooner keep it down there and just be religious hmm? and do all the proper religious things and believe all of the proper religious words. Uh, this fighting, struggling, encountering of the wild beasts is uh, pretty much the early work of religion. In fact, if you don't do it, you don't go very deep. You usually worship images of God, not God. You, 
usually secure yourself, but not your true self, what we call uh, your false self. But thank God the passage ends by saying, and angels ministered to him. If you can stay with it and not run and not panic and not deny and not split and not avoid and not pretend, all of which are a struggle, uh, I promise you, with right hand raised, I promise you the ministry of bigger voices, consoling voices, uh, a larger truth that can hold and, and absorb the wild beasts. Uh, it's worth waiting for, I promise you. But my experience, I've been a priest 42 years, uh, most people don't wait. It's, it's too painful to meet the wild beast, to, to face your true self, your true motivations, your actual reasons for doing what you do. You see, you start life like you wonderful young people are doing by finding your task, your job, your occupation. And that feels like life. Well, let's just call it the task. And hopefully you're here to find your job or your, your area of competence. It's, but somewhere in the middle of life, usually it begins vaguely in your 30s, but deepens in your 40s and becomes full-blown assault by the time you're in your 50s, uh, you start facing what I call the task within the task. And that's what you're really doing. What you're really doing when you're doing what you're doing. And you can be doing the best thing in the world, but filled with resentment and judgment and anger. And that's the energy you're really putting out, even if you're a preacher or, or a teacher or something wonderful. The task within the task is who you really are. But it takes a long time to recognize uh, that because it hides itself. Well, it disguises itself. Uh, when you reconcile the task within the task, what you're really doing, when you're doing what you're doing, uh, with your task. Like, I'm still a priest. I hope I'm doing it a little bit better than I did when I was young. With a little purer motivation, a little more consciousness of my my true self, my true needs and desires, then you reach what we would call integrity, where you can hear the voices of the angels, as it were, the better voices, the better angels of our nature, as Abraham Lincoln called them. And it's only then that we get to, uh, I don't want to go beyond my time, uh, that we, that we get to verses 14 and 15 of Mark's Gospel. Then he goes to Galilee and has the courage and the depth and the integrity to proclaim the kingdom of God. And you know what he says? It's not something later, it's something now. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come. It's not a later reward. It's a present experience. But notice that this is the first time Jesus has talked. Uh, and he's apparently around 30 years old. All I can conclude is the first 30 years, he's listening. He's learning. He has what we call beginner's mind to recognize that I don't know. That my job is to be a student. My job is to listen and learn, and maybe I'll have put it together well enough. Uh, I'm afraid I started preaching at 27, which was too early, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, it takes at least about that long to know your task, but to know even with greater importance, what am I really doing when I'm doing what I'm doing? And that gives your word and your task and your job and your occupation and your sermon or, or whatever it is you're doing a kind of integrity, a 
kind of depth, a kind of naturalness, a kind of freedom, a kind of faith that uh, really makes the Word much more penetrating and much more real. I hope my few moments of trying to break open the Word allows you now to have a little more courage to do that in your own life.